Hi everybody, my name is Josh. I'm an amateur radio operator. My call sign is KI6NAZ. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Wakako Pipa Mocha, a portable travel, hiking, outdoors, coffee maker. You basically will put ground coffee in here, give it boiling water, and with a really cool twist, extract the coffee from the brew basket. Very cool design and we're going to talk about it today. I test out a lot of coffee gear for going in the field. And I need to be really, really, really clear in what I'm saying because I know there's a lot of coffee people who may be watching this. Uh, I am an amateur radio operator first, a outdoorsman, I guess, second, and coffee enthusiast somewhere lower than that. So I'm not going to be talking about the best production of coffee. There are better channels for that, like James Hoffman, I'm sure you're familiar, who's also reviewed the Nano Presso here. He says something in his review of the Nano Presso that I agree with. That is, sometimes when you're in the field, you want more than one shot of espresso. Espresso is amazing, but in the field, you sometimes want a cup of coffee, a better cup of coffee than just what a lot of backpackers do, which is use dehydrated crystals or something like that. The Wakako Pipa Mocha is, I think, the solution to that. I've had this for a couple of months now, and I've been experimenting with it. This is a reverse vacuum extrusion of coffee that you can pre-fill before you go in the field, or you can take a grinder with you and just grind up your coffee as you would um, you know, any other time. And you basically will fill this with hot water, boiled water, and you screw the collar here, this orange collar, and it will extrude the coffee out. It's a fantastic design, and it packs up pretty small. And second, this acts as the thermal cup for your cup of coffee. Let's make a cup of coffee with the Pipo Mocha here. Inside, you've got your lid. You've got a scoop. There's a funnel. A brush for cleaning. And then the basket. And the way this works is it's pretty simple. Put the funnel on top and fill in your pre-ground coffee. I like to do this right before I make a cup until it hits the top of the cup. Cap it on. You can kind of overpack it a little bit, but this is going to be problematic when you get to uh, the actual twisting. It could create a really hard extraction, which might under extract the coffee. Now at this point, you're, you're ready to go. You just gotta fill this with hot water and then you submerge it in. So I'll get some water going and we'll make a cup. This is my outdoor stove setup. <laughs> I figured we'd do it as most likely I would do it in the field. Now I will point this out while we're, we're warming up the water. You have one three quarters, half and one quarter serving size or cup sizes. And these lines that run down on the inside is what tells you when you're full or not. So you just need to pour water up until that line until you see it, and then they stop. It makes it really easy to, uh, to get this set up to, put, to brew. All right, we got a boil going. Let's let this sit a second. I don't usually try to pour boiling water straight into my coffee. All right, here we go. All right, so we're at the graduated line for one full cup. We're gonna take our brew basket. You kinda of wanna be careful here. I come in at an angle until it's up against one side. I'm holding it with one finger and I just kinda of ease it in and let it go. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna wait for this to go all the way down to the bottom and then you're gonna pick up the cup and give it a couple of taps. And you will see a lot of air come up. That's taking air out of the brew basket it's probably taking a little bit of the air out of the chamber in the bottom that we're going to create this vacuum with. That's about all you need. Now, take your lid, which has an O-ring on it. It gives you a bit of suction. There is a little notch here, so you're not, you wouldn't be able to pull it. You wouldn't be able to twist it if it was completely isolated. But put the cap on, push down. Now, taking 
the cup in your one hand and the ring in the other start to twist and you want to be about one second a twist. You will pick up resistance after about the third or fourth twist. That is how you know it's working. What's happening is all the O-rings and seals that are along the body of the cup and the twisty spirally thing and the brew basket are creating a vacuum at the bottom as we extract up through the water the brew basket which forces the water through the brew basket and your coffee grounds and leaves you with a delicious coffee. It shouldn't be too hard to twist and you definitely don't want it to be too light. Both ways are bad and will give you a poor brew. Keep going until you get to the end. I Sometimes you'll get to the end and you'll twist and the whole thing will turn. So when that happens, take the top and twist the ring. Hold the top and twist the ring. It'll be hot though, so you may have to hold at the top. And you'll hear it, it'll loosen up and then you're just kind of free. At that point, you can actually pull the body away. When you're done, you can also open the lid and check and see if there's any water inside. If there's water inside, that means you didn't get the full water put through the coffee, you didn't get a full extraction, you didn't do it correctly. What that likely means is that the grinds of your coffee are probably too fine. It needs to be medium coarse ground to get a full extraction. All right, so after you're done with your extraction, the lid has a screw top that will seal up and it will prevent the coffee from leaking out, which is nice, so you're in the field, you get set up, make yourself a coffee, make a big mess on your workspace, then you close the lid on it and protect it so you can go hiking or whatever. Uh, generally, I take the ingredients and water into the field, make my coffee, enjoy my coffee, pack it all up, and go about my business. So this is about what it looks like on a full, a full brew. I'll get a shot of that so you can see how full it is. Now, unlike the the threaded vacuum chamber, this has a loose O-ring connection and there's a bit of a gap here so it will come off really easily. If you put hot coffee in this cup and you take this and you go to town screwing this thing on, the heat transfer will cause this to become very difficult to open. That's why there's two little nubs on the side and you kind of have to get your hand over it and really turn it if you get stuck. Uh, my general recommendation is just give it a couple, maybe, maybe give it one turn and that'll prevent it from leaking and you're good. All right, so you've finished your coffee. You take the tube here, spin it all the way back up to the top, put it back in, put in the brew basket, take the funnel, flip it over, throw it on top, throw in the brush, throw in the, cu the scoop. The other way is better and then throw the lid on. And that's it, you're ready to go, head back out, head home from the field or whatever you're doing. I've found that every cup of coffee that I've had, even using store-bought grounds, tastes better and has a better extraction in the Pipa Mocha than a traditional drip maker. I don't think that's really surprising though. This is gonna be comparable to like an AeroPress. The advantage of this though is that it has the vacuum cup. Your thermal cup is already provided and it has a lid. It packs up pretty small. I think this is an appreciable size for something that you would put in a backpack, for instance. And they do sell bags, protective cases that you can put on. I will note in my, in my trials, I did drop this from normal human standing height and it, it did hit the corner. There was no rupture of the vacuum seal. It's still perfectly fine and still in working order. So it is a bit resilient, although you can occasionally get some little bumps uh, as you use it. I've had a lot of fun with this. Uh, I think it produces a really good cup of coffee. And I will again state, I am not a coffee expert. I am a coffee enthusiast and enjoyer of coffee. And remember, I'm doing this when I'm out in the field or sometimes I just want a quick cup of coffee to go. I'll make it in the morning and head out the door kind of thing. And for all those instances, it's great. Hand ground coffee or coffee that you've ground right before brewing, preferably out of a burr grinder, is going to be much better in the end result that you get. So from my point of view, Josh KI6NAZ, particularly for you ham radio outdoors people, you know you love coffee. I give a solid 
solid points to the Wakako Pipa Mocha. If you're interested in this, there is a link in the description. It is to an affiliate link. So if you do end up purchasing this, I will get a bit of the uh, money from that. It doesn't cost you any more, but just so you know, right up front, I, this is an affiliate uh, product link. If you enjoyed this video, and hey, if you're watching this, coffee lovers who aren't ham radio operators yet, you just don't know you are yet, check out my channel. I have a lot of beginner and introductory information for those that are interested in amateur radio or pursuing radio communication from a civilian or non-commercial level. So if you're interested in that, take a look at my channel, first playlist at the top. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. And I'll talk to you again soon. See ya. I love outdoor coffee.